How many of you uh, have lived that song? Come on, somebody help me, right? Yeah, Lord have mercy. Good night. Absolutely. That was incredible. Um, and then it is well. Wow, you know, just powerful. Sometimes uh, uh, we plan out at least a month in advance. So on the board, those songs had been planned for over a month. And so it is amazing about where you are in your life right now today. Uh, you heard what you heard through song. Pretty, pretty powerful, no doubt. Hey, let me say quickly uh, that uh, I moved my mother uh, in yesterday, and I had so much help. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you that showed up. We did it in less than an hour, which is pretty amazing. So thank you all for that. Uh, it was uh, incredible. Uh, I appreciate it so much, and so does she. And then uh, you guys, we got two weeks away for our men's conference. Uh, we have a discount code that's only for new season men, uh, and it'll be expired next uh, in the next few days, actually. So if you're going to get a ticket, get a ticket. Ladies, go ahead and buy your man a ticket and tell him if he gets mad, he'll get glad when he goes to the conference, okay, uh, that he went. It'll be incredible. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and I'm going to talk about the heart and uh, the bad part of our heart, the good part of our heart, and how do we control it. It's going to be powerful, I promise you. Uh, I may have to, have to preach that here, uh, not just to men. And so uh, make sure you're a part of that. And then you saw that incredible El Salvador video. Uh, I saw it yesterday for the first time. Incredible. Uh, in September, we are going to Peru, and that will be uh, uh, not our last trip because we're going to uh, Africa, Uganda, uh, in May, but uh, we are going uh, in September to Peru, and so uh, be be a very similar trip to like uh, El Salvador. If you want to go, you ought to go. Uh, let me pray about going. Yeah, God wants you to go. I heard about uh, a bird, uh, a parakeet, right, uh, called Chippy. All right, uh, Chippy was a parakeet with a ha he was a happy bird. Uh, he sang all the time, but then something changed in his life. The problem started with uh, Chippy's owner uh, decided to clean out his cage with a vacuum cleaner. And while the owner was cleaning out the cage with a vacuum cleaner, the owner put the hose uh, in the cage, uh, her cell phone rang, and she got distracted. And when she looked down uh, for a second there, uh, she realized she sucked Chippy into the vacuum. And so the owner quickly turned off the vacuum cleaner and opened up the bag, and there was Chippy, alive but stunned, dazed and covered with dirt. The owner grabbed Chippy, ran to the bathroom, turned on the water full blast, and held Chippy under the water. When she saw that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she decided that she needed the help. So she grabbed a blow dryer and began to blast the bird, Chippy, with hot air. As you can imagine, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits there and stares. How many of you have been through it so bad that you have been blown up, passed down, sucked around, I mean, just completely washed up, blown up to the point where it's stolen the song. The joy in your heart is gone. If there was one person in the Bible that understood outside of Jesus what it would be like uh, to uh, be blasted and to be uh, washed up and blown up would be the Apostle Paul. Matter of fact, you cannot read the Bible and study the Apostle Paul and realize the frustrations, the headache, the heartbreak, and the very brink of burnout that he experienced in his ministry. It was indeed Paul. Now, if you were here last week, we started a brand new series called Burnout, right? And we looked at a guy 
guy named Elijah. And we talked about, if you were here, we talked about how burnout not dealt with can lead to depression, right? And if you're not careful, you can get so burned out that you end up being depressed. And we talked about the difference, and I hope you caught this, last Sunday, the difference between being stressed out and being burned out. Come on, somebody grunt at me, right? There's a, there's a difference between being stressed out and actually being burnout, right? And so we gave a definition, and I'm going to really hit this hard today, so I want you to make sure you pay attention, all right? It's a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress, okay? That is what burnout is. Now, notice it's emotional, it's physical, and it's mental, okay? It is literally a lot of different things over a period of time, right? Now, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians. I'm going to be in a passage today that I've never preached before, okay? So I'm always excited and nervous at the same time about preaching a passage that I've, I've never preached. So here's the first time. Here we go. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 28. Listen to Paul, and tell me if you don't see him, why he didn't burn out, I have no idea, but he's right, well, I do, I'm going to show you today. Watch this. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. That doesn't mean marijuana. Okay, it's like rocks being thrown at. Okay, just make, you got, we got a lot of new Christians. Just got to make sure they understand that that stone is not being like stone, stone. Okay. Uh, three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, my own people, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, Beside the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Now, listen to this big idea. You ready? When you've had enough, God is enough. When you've had enough, and every single one of us have been at the point in our life, I have had enough, right? Some of you are burnt out on your family. Some of you burn out on your marriage. Some of you burn out on your church. Some of you burn out on uh, life and uh, kids and everything else, right? And so you've had enough. But I want to remind you, when you've had enough, God is enough. Now, what happens is, it's the presence of multiple problems and multiple situations that come over and over and over again that cause panic and cause us to have burnout, right? It's not that one thing. Most everybody can handle one thing, even if it's a big, gigantic thing. You know, wow, that was gigantic. It was big, but hey, it's okay. But it seems like when it's one thing after another, every time you turn around, it's something, right? I mean, it's like you're in a boxing ring, right? I left, a right, an uppercut. I mean, it just keeps on coming and keeps on coming. Does anybody have any? Am I preaching by myself up here? Okay, well, I knew we had a few people that understood, right? And so we all understand the fact that it keeps on happening. I mean, the pink slip comes. The rejection letter arrives. The divorce papers are delivered. The check bounces. I know that's never happened to any of you, right? The doctor calls and the report is not a good uh, report. On and on and on we could go, right? And that's the point. It just keeps going on and on and on. Paul knew all too well the physical the mental and the emotional and, of course, the spiritual problems that can easily turn to burnout. Let me say that again. Make sure you get this. The physical, the emotional, 
the mental and even the spiritual problems that happen over and over and over that literally cause you to have a burnout. So let's walk through them. Uh, the physical, all right? It says, uh, from the Jews five times, I received 40 stripes minus one. Now, listen carefully. You remember, we're going to talk about this in a few weeks, right? When Jesus was crucified, right before he was crucified, you know they took the cat of nine tails, right? You know, that whip that had glass and bone and, and, and other objects in it. And they literally whipped Jesus, right? And they did it. The Jews did 40 days or 40 stripes minus one, so 39 times. So Jesus, right, was scourged. 39 times. Paul says, I have been scourged 195 times. 195 times. They took that whip and they beat me. And by the way, he had another four books he wrote after he wrote uh, Corinthians. So literally probably a whole lot more than that. So at least 195. Can you imagine being on a pole, stripped down, and it being scourged 195 times? That's the physical pain he went through. He says, uh, three times I was beaten with rods. Jewish people would beat you like eight times, seven the number of completions right and perfection so they wanted to do one more on top of that eight so normally it could be more but normally eight times they would take a rod and beat you eight different times so at least 36 times in his life he was beat with a big old rod upside his head in his body can you imagine the bones that were broken through that he says uh in weariness and in toil, in sleepless nights often. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Hey, I cannot sleep. All the craziness happening in my life. And thir hunger and thirst and fastings and cold and in nakedness. He's trying to tell you, hey, I've been out in the cold. I've been, I've been, I didn't have enough clothes to wear. I mean, I'm telling you, it was bad. The physical part. Now, for you and I today, the physical is working 50 hours a week or 60 hours a week or 70 hours a week or taking care of people and all those kind of things, the physical. Then watch the mental, the mental. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been in the deep. Now, I've been uh, out on the ocean. I've been on a cruise. I've been deep sea fishing. Uh, but I've never been out when there was like a really a tough storm. I mean, I've been out when it's been cloudy and a little thunder and lightning and, and there's been rocking a little bit, but I wasn't afraid. Uh, but you probably maybe have been to that. Can you imagine being out in the middle of the ocean in the deep and it's rocking and you're getting ready to think you're getting ready to die? The mental anguish of that, right? He says, uh, in journeys often in, in perils of waters, he said, man, I've been in, and you keep on reading, I've been in the river, I've been in the ocean, I've been everywhere, he said, and I'm telling you, I've almost died every single time. The mental anguish of that. And then the spiritual. Watch this. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily is my deep concern for all the churches. All right, so I have um, deep concern for New Season Church. Of course, right? I'm the pastor. I'm the shepherd of this church. I got deep concern, right? And no doubt, uh, I have had many sleepless nights, right? You know, worrying, praying, asking God to do this and do that. Of course, right? Can you imagine what he's saying here? He's saying, I've got all the churches that I've started, right? I've started a lot of churches. Every one of these churches that I've been to on my first missionary journey, remember? Then on the second missionary journey, I went back to those same churches, the weight of all that's happening there. And if you read the Bible, you know, Paul wrote like 12 books. So when you read the Bible and you read the churches that he's writing to, and you understand the church right now, Corinth, was the worst church in the Bible. They were the most immature, they were the most corrupt, they were most sexually active in the bad sense of the way. I mean, they, it was a bad, bad church. He says, you know what? It's, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed spiritually thinking about that. And then the emotional part. In perils of my own countrymen and perils of the Gentiles. In other words, people. Have you ever noticed that people can cause some burnout in your life. 
Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's your own people that really can get you? Man, he says, and when you read the New Testament, you read, and I even read this morning, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 devotionally, Paul named some people in his life that were friends of his, that were with him at the beginning, but weren't with him at the end. Matter of fact, he tells you today, I read it, he talked about Demas and Alexander, and he said, hey, he said, Demas, he was with me, he was for me, we were going on doing ministry together, we prayed together, and then today I read it, it said, hey, he left me, he forsook me for the present world, he wanted to live for the world instead of live for Jesus. There's no pain like living without friends. There's no pain like living without friends, except for friends who abandon you. No one's ever had that happen, right? Sometimes everyone that you thought you could count on just isn't there. Have you ever noticed that the people, uh, well, you know what? Hell or high water, I know so-and-so is going to be with me at the end, and then the FBI can't find them. Everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? I mean, we thought they were going to be there. Now they're not. When you're in the thrust of burnout uh, or even close to it, you got to find a friend. You got to have that person, right? That brother. That so I, I, was, I was so encouraged when somebody comes to the altar, somebody that doesn't even know that person comes forward and prays for them. You know what I mean? And then they hug. You know what I mean? That's that, that bond that only Christian people have, right? But when you're in the thrust of burnout or close to it and you can't find a friend, it pushes you deeper into despair. It's a sin to abandon your friend in a time of need. But it's also a sin to get bitter when that friend abandons you. Dang, right? And it's... If you're not careful, you allow resentfulness and a root of bitterness. Hebrew says a root of bitterness can spring up inside of you and will overtake you. The road to burnout is paved with bitterness and unforgiveness, right? The road to burnout, if you're on the road to burnout, it's paved with bitterness and unforgiveness, One of the surest ways to destroy your spiritual life and to slide into burnout is bitterness and unforgiveness. The number one stronghold upon a Christian that's saved is bitterness and unforgiveness. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27 that you give place and opportunity to the devil when you have bitterness and unforgiveness inside of you. When you allow bitterness and unforgiveness to control you, you literally give the devil a place, an opportunity, a foothold in your life. You see, Not only will bitterness sink your ship, it will drown everybody else with you. Hmm. Have you ever been around anybody that you can just tell they're so bitter? Man, they're just bitter. Life happened and they're bitter. Nothing injures the human spirit like the injuries inflicted by other people. Please help me if I'm by myself up here. Right? Have you ever been betrayed, hurt? It steals the life out of you, right? When you suffer a deep betrayal by those who you thought were for you, something inside of you goes dark. Amen, Pastor Steve. And something goes dark inside of you. And if you're not careful and you don't deal with that, you'll end up being dark and hard the rest of your life. There'll be a wall that you build and you won't let anybody in. Pain is inevitable. You're going to have pain. Bitterness is a choice. You can have pain, but bitterness is a choice. So people problems can be a negative catalyst 
to burnout, right? And so when you've had enough, thank God that God is enough. So here's the question. How did Paul avoid burnout? I mean, we just read one little four passages of scripture about the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual things that literally would have had anybody else in the building, including me, to burn out, right? So how did he not burn out? So I'm gleaming this from literally the Bible of of the Apostle Paul. All right, listen carefully. You have to give your pain a new name. You got to give your pain a new name. See, what happens is you experience something, and then you give it a name, and then you live out that name. All right, let me give you uh, some examples, okay? All right, instead of disappointment, of the pain of disappointment, right? Because by the way, the pain of disappointment is a big pain, right? So instead of the pain of disappointment, instead of naming it disappointment, hey, it's a turning point. See how I gave it a new name, right? Hey, no, it's not a disappointment. It's a turning point. Hey, hurt. I've had deep hurt. You've had deep hurt. Guess what? If you're not careful, you'll name that pain hurt and live in that hurt for the rest of your life. But instead... It's a new season. Oh, you, you did. Did you know that I named new season, new season? Do you know, do you know, like, like, like I named it. I can, t- I can remember where I was. I can remember what I was reading. Isaiah 43, that God in my life, I was involved, uh, literally 17, 18 years ago with a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, a lot of frustration, and I needed personally a new season, and God showed me in Isaiah, I'm going to do a new thing. The old things are gone. I'm going to do a new thing, and it's going to be a new season in your life. I named this church new season because I needed a new season. And if you read the website, Vicki and I wrote it together. It says, if you have been hurt and gone through blah, 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 and you need a new season, come on. Anger, got to name that thing differently. Release. Betrayal, every single one of us have experienced betrayal. Every single one of us have had that friend that was so close and and you were like brothers or you were like sisters and then that person turned their back on you. You got to name that thing a life lesson. Boy, that's a life lesson to be learned there, right? Because if you live with the pain of betrayal your whole life, you'll never trust anybody ever again. There'll be a wall your whole life. Forsaken, we just sang about that today, didn't we? Man, I haven't been forsaken. Boy, I got a new opportunity. It's not bitterness. I'm not going to live with the pain of bitterness. I'm going to live and be better. And instead of burnout, I'm going to have a breakthrough. Instead of being on the verge of burnout, I'm going to have a breakthrough. Give your pain a new name. I like how I just said that. Give your pain a new name. Man. I wish I could sing. All right, number two. This is what Paul did. You have to give yourself permission to grieve. Life is a series of losses. Life is a series of losses. You got to give yourself permission to dream, uh, to grieve. Now, for some of you, it is a death. A physical death. Somebody you love died, and you are, need to grieve over that person. And if you don't grieve over that person, it will come back six months from now, a year from now, and it'll it'll explode on you. You got to learn to grieve. For some of you, it's not a person that died physically. It's a dream that you had. It's a goal you had. It was a relationship that you had or wanted to have, right? And now it's not happening. You had these big plans, and now it's not going to work out. Even though he was working everything out for good. I mean, you thought you were going to marry him. You thought you were going to marry her. You thought you were going to land that big job with that big paycheck, but you got minimum wage instead. 
It didn't work out. Life didn't work out. You, you, you dreamed a gigantic dream, but it didn't work out. You better grieve it. Because if you don't grieve it, you're going to end up getting bitter and resentful. If you lost something, you got to grieve it out. Listen to me. You got to grieve it out. And if you don't grieve it out, then you're going to burn out. You understand that? If you don't grieve it out, I lost this. Man, I, I thought I was going to be married to this person for the rest of my life. I was married for 10 years, and it didn't work out. And it, it's like losing somebody, right? Anybody been divorced? I have not been divorced. But if you've been divorced, you know. You've lost something. You better grieve it out, or you will burn out. Number three, you have to open your heart again. Man, if you're not careful... Because you, you know, you, you, you disguise it as wisdom. Well, I'm just being wiser this time without getting close to people. It's really probably not wisdom. It's probably you're afraid to get hurt again, right? Man, if I let myself out again, I'm going to get my heart, you know, stomped on again. I'm going to trust again and all those kind of things. I get it. Trust me, I do. When you mix the mental and the emotional uh, and hurt and pain, when you mix all of that together, it's easy to shut down your heart and to keep it closed. I mean, it's very easy to keep everybody at a distance and to have that look on your face. And it, it's going to be hard, and I, I know it, it's going to be very difficult. And, and can y'all not throw, ladies, will y'all not throw anything at me? It's a whole lot harder for y'all than it is for us guys to let it go. It really is. Guys, we can fuss and fight and argue and be mad at each other. Michael, you and I could have a throwdown argument, but in a couple of days later, hey, we're high-fiving, we're okay. You ladies, six months later, y'all still talking about that. That's how y'all are built, right? That emotional scarring that takes place. And you guys don't forgive easy. You, ladies, you'll put those walls up. You got to bring them down. Because if you're not careful, oh, man, this is good right here. You got to open your heart to new relationships, new experiences, and new possibilities. Dang. You got to open up your heart, man. There's got some new relationships out there, man. I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt again. Well, guess what? You probably will. Aren't you glad I came to encourage you this morning? <laughs> right? You're probably, you're probably going to get hurt again. You probably are. And uh, new relationships, new experiences, new possibilities. Open up that heart to see what God's going to do. Because you want to sing again, right? You want to have that joy again. Because for some of you, it's been a too, too long. Well, I heard about this bird. You know, I started with the bird. I'm going to end with the bird, okay? Uh, a little bird was flying south for the winter. It was so cold that the bird began to freeze in midair. And the bird froze and fell to the ground covered with snow, almost dead. A horse came by and dropped some dung on the bird. The pile of horse dung warmed the bird and brought it back to life. It lay there all warm and happy and soon began to sing for joy. But a cat was nearby and heard the bird singing and took the bird out of the pile of cow dung and ate him. Here's the moral of the story. Not everyone who drops crap on you is your enemy. Not everyone who gets you out of crap is your friend. And when you're in deep crap, make sure you sing with the right people around you. Somehow, through all the 
junk that Paul went through, he was able to keep a bird's eye view, right? He was able to live above his circumstances and see that God was working everything out and to see that, you know what? At the end of it all, it's well with my soul. Let me give some takeaways. Fatigue, frustration, failure, fear, abandonment, and lowliness are all catalysts to burnout. Man, if you're on your road to burnout, you're going to be tired. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to have some failure. You're going to have some fear. You're going to feel you've been abandoned, and you're going to feel loneliness and isolated. All of those are catalysts to burnout. And if you were here last week, about 80% of all of you in all three services, because we did a poll in all three services, about 80% of you said, I've either been burnt out before or I'm there right now. 80%. That's big. Takeaway number two. If you can pass through the breaking point without being broken, you'll avoid burnout. If you can pass through all the craziness of life, all the pain, all the financial craziness, all the mental, all the emotional, all the spiritual, if you can pass through all of that, the breaking, listen, the breaking point without actually being broken. You know what I'm talking about? To broken, I don't, we're all broken people. I'm talking about broken, where you quit God, you quit church, you quit your marriage, you quit your family, you just want to run away and hide. You just want to quit everything. If you can pass through the breaking point without being broken, you'll avoid burnout. And then the big idea, when you've had enough, God is enough. He really is enough. All things work together for good. That's a great verse, right? Romans 8, 28. Everything works together for good. God, God has got it all worked out. Even all the hurt and all the hate and all the mess, God's got it worked out. I love that verse. I just don't want you to quote it to me when I'm in it. Right? Right? I don't want you to quote me that verse like when I'm in the middle of my pain, right? Hey, I just lost somebody. I just took somebody to the hospital. I just, all the craziness of life. Well, you know that God's going to work. I know. But I don't want you to tell me right now. But I want the Spirit of God in time to tell me. Because when, when you tell me, I'm in Job devotionally right now. I, wrote, I read Job 31 this morning. <laughs> He went back and forth with his friends telling him all, you know, the craziness of life, right? Listen, I don't need anybody to tell me in the midst of my mess. I need the Spirit of God to speak to me and say, it's going to be all right. I'm working everything out for your good and my glory. Trust me. Lean into me. Press into me. It is well. And so you can be saved and be on the verge of burnout. You can not be saved, which many of you here or in this building or watching online, you're not a Christian. You've never given your life to God. With all the craziness of life has, I don't know how in the world you're making it. We have not a crutch. We have a Savior that loves you, died for you, was buried and rose from the dead. And you can have a relationship with him. And if you've never engaged that relationship, I would hope today you would say yes. Let's pray together. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed in the quietness of this moment. Pastor Steve, I am a Christian. Jesus lives inside of me. But man, I've been on that road of bitterness and unforgiveness and fatigue and depression and discouragement and disappointment. Man, I'm burnt out or I'm on the very verge of burnout. Man, I hope today that God will speak clearly to you and that you'll avoid being burnt out because nothing good really comes out of being 
completely burned out emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Run to Jesus. You're here today, you're watching online, you don't know that your sins have been forgiven. You don't know that Jesus lives inside of you. Today's your day. Today's your day. God is calling. God is speaking clearly. The question is, are you listening? And if the answer is yes, you want to be saved, I want to help you do it right now. I'm going to pray a prayer right now, and I'm going to say the prayer out loud. You got to mean it. You got to be sincere. This is you willing to turn away from your sin and turn to God and give Jesus your life. It's such a big deal. It's not a casual thing. It's a big deal. And so today, if God is speaking clearly to your heart, today you need to give your life to God. I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Just cry out to him in your heart as I say it out loud. Jesus, I need you. God, I know that I've sinned against you, and I really am sorry. And I am willing right now to turn away from my sin and turn to you. I believe, Jesus, you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. And right now, I'm committing my life to you. Save me, forgive me, change me. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. We are so excited that today you decided to join us online. We hope today that you were encouraged and blessed by the Word of God and encouraged today to walk with God in a deeper, more intimate way. For some of you, you just prayed that prayer with us. You just invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart. And if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, do you realize that Jesus just saved you? Your sins just got saved forgiven. And that is the greatest thing in all the world. Matter of fact, the Bible says that all of heaven throws a party because you just said yes to Jesus Christ. And so we want to encourage you to read the Bible, to pray, to find you a a church home that you may be involved in, or even on this online campus we've got going on here, or I want to encourage you, if you just prayed that prayer, to let us know about that. Matter of fact, You can text your response to 470-509-5139. I want to encourage you to do that right now. Don't wait. You don't have to think about it. If you just pray that prayer, text that response to us and let us know, and then we will get back with you and help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Again, thanks for watching us online.